In today's episode, we're going to demonstrate how to build this FM radio receiver. We've demonstrated this earlier on. So that's the volume control and there's the channel. So I can tune the channel up or down by pressing any of these buttons. This center button is the menu select for volume versus channel. Now, if we want to use this button for channel up down or volume up down, we use this yellow button here to select the menu we want to control and then we can press the buttons. Alright, we're going to go into this radio to show how we built this. Um, already you've seen us soldering this up before. This is another one we're trying to solder. So we have the pins plugged into a, a breadboard. And then we'll put the RDA 5807M on it and then we'll solder it on the board. And we try and different sizes of the, the pins. We use the longer one here and then the previous one was even much longer. And then we have uh, the switches so we can use this type of switch or that type of switch the black ones and what you do uh, you get your meter and you find out which of the pins are connected so you check for continuity and then you check the switches the opposite ones seem to be connected so if I check these two they are always connected so for me, for my switch, I'm going to use the ones that are close to each other or closer to each other. Those ones are the switches. So I can connect these two. And then when I press the button, when I press the button, it activates. So that's how you check out the switch, what you want to use. All right. So let's go into the code because we have some explanations to give in this circuit that we have right here so we'll put this aside for another day if you want to learn how to solder um, electronic components please watch our video on how to solder electronic components so we're going to put this aside for now right the radio is still here we just shut the volume down all right when your, your ground is not connected properly, you can't seem to shut it off when you go low. Um, I'll show you how the volume control works uh, when I scale the circuit diagram, but you have to make sure your ground is connected properly. These wires are shaky, so sometimes... Anyways, you know what? So you have to solder it so it doesn't uh, give you some uh, unwanted uh, behavior. So let's turn off this camera and look at the components we're using today we're using two components basically we're using the AT tiny 85 for this and then we're also using the RDA A5 5807M you can see the pinouts um, so we connect them together um, in the circuit diagram below so basically the SDA and the SCL uh, are both connected together from the from the AT tiny to the RDA um, chipset. So you connect those up as shown, connect your antenna, and then we took one of the um, volume outs. So we took R out. You can also use um, L out, which means left out, and then connect it to an, an amplifier. In this project, we're using the same speaker we used earlier. This speaker right here is what we're using for this project. So we don't have to build another amplifier, just 
um, simple uh, rechargeable speaker I'll plug it in it's an amplifier plug the audio in from here so we have a, a connector that we, we made just so that it wires it and then plug it in but we can actually play this from the headphone and it's very loud from the headphone so I'm gonna try a headphone on it to demonstrate how it works So right here I'm going to try this headphone directly with no amplification, just directly from, from the radio. The sound is really low, so I'm going to put it close to the computer. Yeah, The sound is low, but it's really loud. It's really loud when you plug it to your ear. But we're gonna just go in here. Don't turn that dial. Friends and new friends, it's time to look at the world through the father's eye. Alright. Alright. See, so don't turn that dial. But anyways, we have to turn it because we're gonna demonstrate something here. Alright. Um, so let's go back here. So we took that out. Now I told you that we're gonna show you how to connect the the volume control which is here so we have a potentiometer and the one terminal is connected to the input source and the other terminal to ground and then the, the wiper of the potentiometer goes into the amplifier so the amplifier will uh, pick signals if you will so let's let's say this is the the length of the resist of the active um, resistance path and then here will be zero resistance and here will be maximum resistance right so if you if you have this the wiper here then it means there's no impedance offered to the signal coming in if this is in there's no impedance offered here and this is your out so zero resistance maximum resistance or maybe uh, maximum signal zero signal if you will so this would be maximum signal this will be minimum signal in terms of signal so when the wiper is at the top it's getting the maximum signal as you as you wipe it down or swipe it down to this point is getting the minimum so there's what they call attenuation if you know about a voltage divider so just view this as two resistors uh, in series right so this is ground and this is the in. This place is the in. And then this is your out. So call this R1 and call this R2. So the voltage here, the input voltage, is your V in, your input voltage. So you know that the current that will flow through this is going to be the same current. That current will be V over R1 plus R2. So that's the current flowing through this path. Now, as the value of this increases, the value of R1 increases, the voltage dropped across it increases. And conversely, also, as the val value of R2 increases, the voltage dropped across it increases. So if you're, take, if you're, you're, meter, you're measuring from here to ground, and this is your V out. So let me remove this. So if this is my V out, so I'm measuring from this point down. As R2 increases, my V out increases. And then conversely, as R1 increases, my V out decreases. So that's how you control the voltage or the signal that go into your amplifier. So as you swipe uh, the potentiometer, as you turn the dial, you're changing the value of each of these resistances. So that's how we achieve volume control. So there's an attenuation that goes on here. As you change the values, as you turn the, the dial, you're changing the values, and then the signals is being attenuated or, or not being attenuated um, in case of increasing the volume. So that's what happens there. Now, so um, on the code that we use for this radio, uh, remember we are using an 80 tiny 85 this is a very small uh, memory size uh, microcontroller so we try to achieve 
the program we have here with min minimal components uh, or and minimum pin minimum pin pin counts. Now the AT Tiny has eight pins. Um, as you already know, you have the positive right here, and then you have the ground already. So we, those two are out of the equation right away. And then you have the SDA and the S. SCL, they are already also out of the equation because you, use the, you need those two to control the RDA 5807. Now you are now left with three more pins. So you are left with um, PB1, PB5, PB3, and PB4. So these are the, the input output pins. But PB1 is also a reset pin, so we don't want to use this pin unless we really want to. Um, we have PB. 3 and PV, PB4 here and then uh, PB1 available, 3 pins available for us. So we have to use this to achieve any other control we want to do with this microcontroller. That will be volume up, volume down. In case we want to use digital control for the volume, then that will be channel up, channel down again for digital control or push button control for the channels. So we have channel up, channel down, volume up, volume down. If you want to con connect any else, any display to it, you you are, you know, it's out of the question, right? So unless you're using a next gen display. So we're probably going to work on a next gen display later. There's a video we did earlier on about next gen display. So I'm going to put a link here so you can go and watch that. I'll put the link in the description. Um, it will show you a lot about the next gen display, how to connect it. So it uses only two pins, so input and output. So if you want to use that for your display, that's great. So let's say we want to use next gen display then. We have, uh, let's use a different color now. Let's use green. Um, so if you want to use a next gen display, let's say you connect one of them here, and then you connect the other one here. So really you're out of paint. You have only one pin realistically to use for uh, any other connection. So, and in that case, let's just highlight that. In that case, that'll be our PB4, which, which also corresponds to analog input A2. So we can use analog input A2 if you go to the pins. Uh, let's just go here and look at it again. Analog input A2, we can use that for our analog input. And then, um, okay, for for that, and then pin uh, A3 or D3 as well, and um, PB1, we can use those for the display. Leaving us now with only analog input A2, this one here, for use with both channel, volume, and uh, any other thing, many. So we can use the same pin for many. We're going to use that for channel. And then we're going to use that for volume. One pin to do all that. For us to achieve that, we have to be very um, creative. We have to be very creative. So how, that's how, what we did here. We used three resistors. So just call them R1 each because they are actually the same value. Um, actually, we use four resistors, sorry four resistors and each value is the same each value is the same but what we did was we built this we built a little code within the um, AT tiny to measure the resistance on the a analog input a2 and we say when you measure this value the value obviously is going to be r3 but when you measure this value here the value will be r2 plus r3 and then when you me measure this value here, it will be R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that will be the total R. And we know the values because we put the resistors, right? We put it when we built it. So we're saying whatever value this gives you, call it R2. So at any point you're measuring, because you're going to press the button one at a time, at any point you're measuring, whatever value you get, that is the value of R2. Um, for that reason, let's just rename this to um, let's rename this to R1, R, R A, R B, and R C. So this will be R A, R B, and R C because of this R2 we have up there. So in that case, then this will be R C, and this will be R B plus R C. There's a switch. And in this case here, 
we're gonna have all right trying to delete this with that deleting the whole circuit so in this case then we're gonna have r a plus r b plus r c so that's what you're gonna measure when you close the switch all right so that's what we did here and then in the code so i'm gonna show the code right now so let's go to the code now right on the code what we've what we've done in the code here is to first of all um declare some we have to include the wire and eprom these are the, the two things the two libraries that we need for this program the 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 wire and eprom right and then in the rest of the code the menu we called it a2 which is the analog input 2 and then we declare the value to be zero and we'll put a volume at four now this is for if you build this with an arduino um Uno or Mega or any other Arduino. Uh, for the AT Tiny, we didn't really use these volumes here because we're using the we're using the analog um, volume control for the for the Arduino uh, AT Tiny. But we're gonna leave the code this way uh, for uh, Arduino Uno and other types of Arduino, Arduino Mega or uh, Arduino Nano and the rest of them. So we declare the voltage, and that that's the voltage we're gonna connect to this point so this is positive and this positive is five volts right so we declare that because we're going to use that to do some math to determine you know the voltage dropped across each resistor remember we talked about it uh right here uh, where is it yeah we talked about it here so we're going to use that to determine the voltage dropped across each resistor to determine the value of that resistor to tell us the value of what has been pressed the same formula format or the same thinking the same idea we used to determine the, the signal amount of signal going into the output is the same way we determine the, the value of resistor here because if we can use this uh, schematic or this design to determine the voltage out we can also use that to determine the resistance um you know that r1 over r2 over r2 we we equivalent to v1 over v2 because the voltage dropped if you have the same current flowing through right so the, the voltage will be i r i r right current times resistance will give you the voltage so if the current is the same you can actually eliminate the current you don't need to put that there so r1 over r2 is v1 over v2 all right so um so let's go back to to determining the resistance so if you already know the voltage across each we can determine the resistance if we know one value but we don't know the other since we know the voltage we can measure the voltage from the uh, arduino we can determine what resistance was there so we fix a value of resistor we know that value and we tell the program in this case r1 you can see we have r1 which is 30,000 30, uh, ohms which is 30 kilo ohms um, so just say 30 kilo ohms 30 kilo ohms right so we know the value there and we're just going to calculate r2 so and initially we say r2 is zero so there's no value there and then we go ahead and determine although although in the program in the program we have let me draw another uh, uh, resistor network here in the program this is actually our r2 and this is r1 because i'm saying this because we took this to a2 analog 2 and then we grounded this and we have the voltage in here uh positive which is the 5 volts and we are telling it determine the voltage drop here and use that to tell us the value of the resistance so when you, when we push a button we are basically um if i want to redraw this let's see let's uh redraw this a little bit let's do small erase just a little bit here all right so if i have my switch here then yeah so when i close this switch i measure the resistance of this value right so that's how, what, what we do now let's go through the rest of the code we declare that our station number which corresponds to the station that we're playing at and then 
in the voice that we start the, the uh, Syria begin this is for debugging purposes only we don't really use it in this program as it is working right now and then we will we'll tell it to play so it will read from the EEPROM that's why we included the EEPROM to read from the EEPROM whatever station was stored there if this is the first time you're flashing your microcontroller and this is the first time you're booting up this radio you will not have any value in your EEPROM so the address location zero we have no value so you say if the station number as read from the EEPROM if the station number is null then assign it a value this value here corresponds to uh, 105.3 megahertz right so you you're saying if you don't have any station pre-programmed go here right away else if you have a station programmed that station becomes your station number then tune to that station we have a small program at the bottom here that we tune to so that this is basically it so we go here we write this to the different boot sectors we, we write this and uh, we write that also this one here corresponds to the volume so I try to change this value to see, uh, you know, make it, this is the maximum volume of 15, or actually 16, but 15 from 0 to 15. Um, so 1111 one, one, one is 15. So I try to change it up to different values, and it um, you can notice slight changes in the volume. So try to play around with it and figure out how you can make it to so you can control the volumes from here. Um, looking into that, if I have time, I'll try to explore that. Then we can use the push buttons to update the values of this it might be very tricky but we'll see if we can do that now once you you you, you do that you reset your radio and then it will start to play um, so in the serial serial uh, monitor we could see it tells you you're tuned to then it will work out the station number now what happens is we took a station number divided by 10 or multiplied by 0.1 and add 87 to it this is because we're, we're in north america and here the fm radio starts from 87 to 108 so when you add this to it it gives you the actual station number and then when we print that out we'll tell you the fm so so let me give you an example for instance we have um this one here we, we had 183 if you remember here in the void setup we said as you set up void setup as you set up if there's no channel tune to 110 one 183 sorry 183 so 183 if i divide this by 10 according to the, for, the formula we have here divided by 10 that gives us 18 point three and then you now add 87 to it so 18.3 plus 87 so that is three that's point three fifteen five carry one nine plus one ten one oh five mega so that's how we get if the, the channel we were tuned to so we do that and we display that we'll tell you that you're tuned to this now if you have the next gen display you will be right writing these values to your next gen display you can concatenate them as a string and write it on your on your next next gen display you can make it to scroll or just make it to pop at a particular place so you can have the numbers um the the, the letters pre-written on the next gen display and you just have the channel filled in so if i were to design that i will have uh, my channel display this way and maybe have you can even have a, a bar a, a horizontal line going through and then you have the numbers written against it so 87 to 108 you can have something animated that will just pop up and show in a corresponding location for your channel or you can just maybe write in a digital format so you have this text box to hold the actual value and you can write the actual value inside it and then the megahertz will be pre-written there's no point sending it because you know this is only for fm radio station so you can do that now let's go back to the code one more time and see what we did with the the, the buttons so in the void loop uh let's get to the void loop yeah here is our void loop we say uh menu value remember the menu value initially we declared it as zero at the beginning um uh, because really we don't know what it's going to be so in the void loop we say menu value will be the analog read of the menu button which is uh, um this is the um 
and all up in two, right? So we read the value there, and whatever value we get there, we'll check if it is more than 200. The reason for this is, because I bread buttered this, there's some jitters and some values that I don't really understand. I just goes from zero to 100 and something. Um, ideally, I didn't expect to see anything without measuring a value, but I think because the wires are uh, hanging around and just uh, sometimes um, having partial contacts, it could give me uh, some phantom values. But when I tested it through my serial monitor, I realized that there's no value up to 200. So I said, if you look at that, the, the menu value and it's greater than 200, then you, you, I call you into action. Remember, my least resistor is 30 kilo ohms in value. So really, it's going to take some uh, real values, real resistors to get the value to up to 30 thousand uh, ohms or 30 kilo ohms so I say if you're more than 200 uh, ohms ideally you just you should write it this way you should say if the many if many so if there's a value there um, but because I have it on breadboard um, I am using giving this value if it is greater than 200 print out the value also want to see what the value looks like before I do other manipulations on it uh, this this was how I discovered there are some values even when I didn't have a resistor there uh, so again, partial contact, you know, phantom values, I don't know. So the value, then I display the value that I printed. But this is for debugging purposes again. So we don't really need it um, in the main code, just for debugging. All right. And then we say, we'll declare this value. So we say buffer is menu value, whatever we have there multiplied by V in. So we declare the buffer at the beginning as well. Um, so if it's a float value, uh, so we say that float again at the beginning is also zero. Now we say take that value from that you measured in the resistor, multiply it by the voltage in. Then your voltage out or your V2 will be that buffer value divided by 1024. And then um, buffer will be uh, V in over V out minus one. And that's how we got here that R2 is R1 multiplied by buffer. So that value of R2 is what we then use to say if that value, because now it gives us the actual value in resistance, and we're saying if that value is greater than 20,000, but that value is less than 50,000. Now, I am trying to measure the value of 30 kilo, ohm, 30 kilo ohms. And I found out that when I measured it, um, sometimes the value range from uh, 20, 25, 28 to 30 something, 33. And that's because of the tolerance of the resistor. Depending on the value of the resistor, you use and the tolerance of the resistor. So to be on the safe side, I took a value that between 20K and 50K. Anything in between that, um, that would be assumed as my first resistor. So when I do that, so... It corresponds to me pressing switch three here. So when I press, so just call this switch one, switch two, and switch three. So this corresponds to reading the value of switch three. And then if that is the case, then increment the station number by two. Why two? Why the choice of two? Um, so let's let's go back to the other calculation we did and figure out why we chose two. Here we, we have a station number of 183, and this 183 corresponded to 105.3 uh, megahertz FM. Now, we know that FM, the, the bandwidth of an FM radio station is 200 kilohertz. We know that. And all this would be equivalent to 0 0.2 megahertz. Right. So we know that. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add this value to the to one o five dots, the three, and see what it gives us. Obviously, it will be that's one o five dot three plus point two. That gives us one o five dot five one zero five dot five. So I am expecting the next station to be at one zero five dot five. That's simple. So how do we then? Um, how do we then get the station number? We have to work this backwards. We got here by adding 87 to a value. 
So we're going to subtract 87 here. So subtract 87. So this is going to be 5. Then 12 minus 7. That's, that's going to be another 5. And then here we'll be left 9. 9 minus 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. So 15. And now, how do we get the number that we added 27 to? We divided it by 10. So whatever number we got here, we're going to multiply it by 10. So if we multiply this by 10, we're going to get 1. So times 10, we're going to get 155. Now, remember that initially we started at 1. Wait a minute. So here... Um, this subtraction 15 sorry 15 minus 7 is 8 15 minus 7 is 8 and then yeah so 185 so this value here is going to be one yeah all right 15 minus 7 is 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 8 so the value is 185. Now we started with 183 and we ended in 185. So one, what's the difference between 185 and 183? That difference is two. So we quickly came here and said, anytime there's a station change, you should realistic, realistically expect the next station two channel numbers away, either up or down. That's why you see two here, and then you see minus two here. So we say station number, is station number plus two and then in this case station number is station number minus two if it is one channel off one channel number off we will just say station number plus plus and then down here will be station number minus minus but because it is two channels or any other number other than one we're going to say station number is station number plus or minus whatever value that means return the original value after you have in returned the, the last value um, after you've incre incremented the original value or decremented the original value by a certain number, in this case, 2. And then we'll say, as you're decrementing here, if, you, if it gets below 9, then start from one, uh, 2, 1, 1. Why, why is that? Why is below 9 our magic number? Of course, if you use the same formula we use here, um, so 9 here, we divide it by 10, so 9 will be... Uh, so 9 divided by 10 will be 0 0.9. And then to that, we're going to add 87. So add 87 to this number. So that will be 87.9 megahertz. So that's the beginning. So we we'll say when you get to this value, remember the, the station should start from 88 megahertz to 108. So we are saying when you get to this point, that's the least you can go. Then jump to 211. Why 211? So we're going to do the same thing again. 211, we're going to divide it by 10. So 211 divided by 10, that gives us 21.1. Then add 87 to it. This is going to be 1, this is going to be 8, 108. So 108.1. So we're saying when you tune the channel, let's go to that uh, next tune display. Yeah. We're saying for this next gen display, when you get to the end here, jump to the beginning. When you get to the beginning, jump to the end. So it's like it's looped. The search is looped. If I'm searching up and I get to the top, it should just start from the bottom and search again. If I was searching down and I get to the bottom, it should just loop back and start from the beginning. So that's what we did here. So you can see I'm mixing these two up. You know, I will show you some going up and then I'll show you some going down because it's basically the same logic. When I get to 211, which is 108.1, I will jump back down to 87.9. And conversely here, when I get to 87.9, I'll jump to 108.1. And so I will be able to search through all the stations. If you're in a different country, find out what, what your minimum is, find the channel number, and maximum is find the channel number and put it right there. And then you tune to the station. I've shown you how to tune that. Now for the volume. Now volume will, will decrement or increment by one. So we just say volume number is, you know, vo is minus minus. So volume number minus minus. 
in this case we're saying when when you do the vo when when you do the menu so let's show the menu the menu button is this one here so when the value of r2 which is here um so when i'm when i close s1 switch and the value of r2 is the combination of all this so that's 30 30 30 that's 90 kilo ohms but i say if it is greater than 80 kilo ohms uh, so this value is 80 kilo ohms greater than 80 kilo ohms which 90 kilo ohms is so when you're great, greater than 80 kilo ohms i need you to show me in the serial print that i've toggled my my menu state and you tell me if it's one or zero and and then um because that is because the toggle menu we declared it as a boolean and we said it is true so at the bottom here then when i press that button i need to print out the state i want to know if it's true or false again this is for my debugging and then i i say if it is toggle menu which is true if it is true then tell me to set my menu to set my volume else tell me to set my channel and then you make my toggle menu not toggle menu so when it, if it was true now it's going to be false and next time you press it if it was false it's going to be true and then i'm going to go to this section where i increment or decrement so here when i say when i press the sec the r three which is the the s s three when i press s three button let me make it bigger when i press the s three button when i'm measuring rc rc um, i'm saying there are two things you do for me first of all if toggle menu is true again i don't have to write this true i can just do it this way right so if toggle menu is true but for the sake of explanation if it is true then increment my station and and do all this things here however if it wasn't true then i'm actually incrementing volume so if it is true i'm incrementing the, the station if it wasn't so when you boot up the radio from the beginning it will be true so when i press any of the up down buttons i'll be incrementing on decre or decrementing the station but when once i press the menu button the sec the middle yellow button so let me show it on the screen one more time So when I press this button here, this is the menu button. When I press it, then I toggle the, the, the toggle menu from true to false. So, but when I boot it up the first time, it is true. So if it is true, then when I press any of these buttons, then I will increment the channel or decrement the channel. But when I press the yellow button, this is no longer true, it will be false. Because remember I said here, down here, that if it was true, when you press it, then it will be false. Because from toggle menu to not toggle me menu so i've switched it to false and in that case when i'm here within this loop i'm going to just go to the other explanation when i'm in this loop then it is no longer true it is false so i'll be decrementing my volume in the other case i'll be uh, decrementing the channel all right so and that's how this radio works i'm going to put the code for you to uh in the in the comments um so you can um take a look at that so we, we've done that we, we are, we're good now so we can test the radio one more time so again I have a delay of two seconds so when I hold it there's a two seconds delay here that allows me to to pre hear what is going on before it goes to do any other thing Actually, I can take I can take this um, delay out of this loop and put it within the PlayStation. So I could put it right down here. So when the radio is already playing, yeah. So if I press this, I'll change the channel one. Then I, I press this. To change the channel back.
while working on a breadboard, you gotta be very careful because sometimes the wires could just come unplugged. Zdrowia, przewlekłego zdrowia, tylko kuruj się, nie Gotta have it. I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer. Rice in the song to the highest bidder. Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast. New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back better than last. Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back. You never gonna look back. Cause damn, I was built to last. You move slow when I move fast. And that's facts. Only I can make a change. Slowly take a step today. I will never be the same. Cause that's what it takes.
music is for you right now go ahead and subscribe to the channel it is absolutely absolutely free someone was asking me what it means you know what subscription means and this just shows that you support what we're doing if you're watching our videos and you like it and you want to see when we post new videos that's all it means there's no cost to it um it's just to, to encourage the person making the video actually I started making videos for YouTube before I knew about subscription and the rest of them. I was just doing it because I have the passion for it. I've been doing um, electronic tutorials from uh, maybe 1990-something, a long time ago, a very long time ago. I've been doing that without thinking about, you know, uh, subscription or monetization or anything like that. I just do it because I like to do it. And if you go to my website, hackerworld.com, you will see that some things that were built were in the 90s before we knew about this um, uh, YouTube stuff. So we we're making videos before now. We we're having tutorials, physically having students in the rooms, and we're making tutorials for them. If you go back to maybe 2005 or thereabout, no, sorry, 2007, yeah, there was a video we did on uh, robotic arms with some of my friends. And it wasn't that I don't think there was monetization then also. We just did it because we like to do uh, these things for fun. But now that you know this is very common, people many people do these videos and but many of them just do it for the sake of doing it and they have their own you know reason for doing it. I do this because I have the heart of a teacher, I like to teach and you can see in the way I present my, my videos that I like teaching, I like people to understand how things are done and maybe they can even take it on and do it better. So if you really want to support us, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit on the notification bell so when we post new videos, you will be one of the first to know. All right, on that note, I'm gonna sign out here. This is a live stream, so it's very long. It's unedited, so you will see some errors, like when I did the math and I just did it quickly without looking at the numbers. You know, you, you, you see, that's, that's one of the fun of having live videos, but then, if this was edited, I would remove that, you know, I would edit that and remove those mistakes. But then I would stay longer making the video. But I, I, I made the corrections that I identified on the call on the while on the uh, demonstration so that you don't get the wrong information out of this. Now, if you have any question for us, please go ahead and post it. In our next video on this series, we'll probably have to talk about how to solder the next one. We've soldered one before, two actually, we've soldered two before. Uh, but we're trying to make it more efficient so they can occupy less space the rda radio you can see how small it is on this board versus that one and this one was actually a smaller version of our original one so we're trying to make it as small as possible so you can occupy smaller areas and when that is possible then um trying to find the, the original one so if we're, if we're able to make it as compact as possible, and I think this is the most compact it could be because the pins are directly on the tiny PCB. If we can get it to this point, then it will occupy less area. Then we can have the the, um, the AT tiny right by it. And you can see the whole board will just be very, very small. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Still trying to look around, see if I can find it. Okay, I can pull this AT tiny here just to demonstrate how small everything will be so just imagine that the whole radio remove this switch the whole radio is just these two components how amazing that will be right so that's what we're trying to achieve then we have just wires go connect them up you can plug your headphone and then that would be great and you can actually stack them up you know one will be under the other so you can have this whole radio uh, in a very compact space like that all right i'm gonna plug this back in and we can try to listen all right actually once you tune this radio you don't need the 80 tiny anymore if you want to stay in one station you don't need the 80 tiny anymore but you won't be able to change the channel that's the problem There's one important thing that I missed, and I just remembered now before we ended the stream. So let's see if we can get to it in two minutes. And that is what happens once we tune to a station. Once we, once we tune to a station, we we write to location zero of the EEPROM, we write the station number to it. Very important. As soon as we assign the station number here, so we make sure that that station number is the one we are listening to. 
we will write the same station number to memory. Why is that? So when we boot up the radio next time, it will remember where we stopped, which will remember what we were listening to. But you have to be very careful. The EEPROM, I think it can take about 100,000 read-write sessions, give or take, 100K, about approximately 100K read-write sections. So uh, read-write. So be very careful. So um, let me, I think I'm blocking something here. Let me show that. So the, the EEPROM can take about 100K read-write sessions. So make sure you don't um, overuse that because after that, you might not be able to write to the EEPROMs anymore. So we write the station number two. So this 100K is actually huge because if you if you are doing this, um, that would be like, um, if you write one, um, maybe, this 100k divided by 100k divided by 365 that's how many years it will take to to get to this number if you're writing once a day but if you tune to it 10 times a day so just divide it by this number and see how many so 10 times a day how how long would that be um so let's see how long that will be um Okay, so that's 100K, one, two, three, 100K divided by 3650. So that would be around 27 years. Approximately 27 years if you're tuning only 10 times a day. And I think I think it's, it's doable. So if you tune only 10 times a day, you can get 27 years out of this. So I don't think you have to worry about anything. If you write, if you tune it 20 times a day, then you should expect to get, uh, divide this by by uh, by two. So we did 10 times and we get this to tw uh, 20 times will be around um, 13 years, 13.5 years. So if you're tuning approximately 20 times a day, so you can get about 13.5 years out of this. So not not too bad. So again, um, so when we write to EEPROM, then on on void setup, next time we reboot this device or this uh, radio on void setup, we go to that EEPROM and address zero, we'll read what is there, and then that will be that becomes our station number. If it is not null, if it is null, we'll start with 108. Uh, 183 sorry which is 105.3 and if it if it has a value then we start from that value and then we we'll go tune once we tune right down here once we tune to that station we'll write a new number to EEPROM all right all right so let me sign off with my signature sign off thanks for <laughs> uh, thanks for staying uh, to the end. Uh, thank, uh, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna take it again. <laughs> thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, if you have not subscribed, please do so right now, and don't forget to share and like this video. Until we come your way again, until we come your way again with more content, stay enthused. All right, thanks, my friends. Stay safe, stay safe. This is a, a you know a different time in our worlds, so stay safe. Um, you know, say I love you to your loved ones, and you know just uh, stay safe. You know, stay safe. Pray always, pray often, and and do stay safe. Stay, keep a positive outlook in life, and stay safe. It's all gonna be well. All right. To avoid any copyright strike, I'm gonna turn off the the volume. And then I'll see you guys in the next one.